work. A speed is simply how much space you cover in a given time. As any kid on a motor scooter knows. <laughs> Since near the velocity of light, we cannot simply add speeds. The familiar notions of absolute space and absolute time, independent of your relative motion, must give way. That's why, as Einstein showed, funny things have to happen close to the speed of light. There our conventional perspectives of space and time strangely change. Your nose is just a little closer to me than your ears. Light reflected off your nose reaches me just an instant in time before your ears. But suppose I had a magic camera so that I could see your nose and your ears at precisely the same instant. With such a camera, you could take some pretty interesting pictures. Paolo says goodbye to his little brother Vincenzo. No, Vincenzo. And rides off. He's now going more than half the speed of light. He's almost catching up with his own light waves. This compresses the light waves in front of him, and his image becomes blue. The shorter wavelength is what makes blue light waves blue. Also, Paolo becomes skinny in the direction of motion. This isn't just some optical illusion. It really happens when you travel near the speed of light. As he roars away, he leaves his own light waves stretched out behind him. Long light waves are red. We say that his receding image is red-shifted. Now, Paolo leaves for a short tour of the countryside. He experiences something even stranger. Everything he can see is squeezed into a moving window just ahead of him. Blue shifted at the center, red shifted at the edges. To a passerby, Paolo appears blue shifted when approaching, red shifted when receding. But to him, the entire world is both coming and going at nearly the speed of light. Roadside houses and trees that he's already gone past still appear to him at the edge of his forward field of view, but distorted and red shifted. When he slows down, everything again looks normal. Only very close to the speed of light does the visible world get squeezed into a kind of tunnel. You would really see these distortions if you could travel near the speed of light. Someday, perhaps, interstellar navigators will take their bearings on stars behind them, whose images have all crowded together on the forward view screen. The most bizarre aspect of traveling near the speed of light is that time slows down. All clocks, mechanical and biological, tick more slowly near the speed of light. But stationary clocks tick at their usual rate. If we travel close to light speed, we age more slowly than those we left behind. Paolo's watch and his internal sense of time show that he's been gone from his friends for only a few minutes. But from their point of view, he has been away for many decades. His friends have grown up, moved on, and died. And his younger brother has been patiently waiting for him all this time. The two brothers experience the paradox of time dilation. They've encountered Einstein's special relativity. Chance. This was just a thought experiment, but atomic particles traveling near the speed of light do decay more slowly than stationary particles. As strange and counterintuitive as it seems, time dilation is a law of nature.